Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about why you should not depend on the government to come rescue you during a disaster. If this is your first time by the channel, welcome. I'm glad you found me and if you've been by here before, welcome back. I'm glad I didn't scare you off in a previous video. Now, especially if you've been by here before and seen several of my videos, it makes sense that you're probably at least enjoying the content somewhat. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if there's any point during this video where you like what you see, you maybe learn something new, go ahead and hit that like button as well. Now, the purpose of this video, it's not to do two things. First of all, it's not meant to make excuses for the government. But at the same time, it's also not meant to like verbally eviscerate them in an unfair way either. The purpose of this video is to discuss things that we have seen happen time after time during large scale disasters where governments kind of let their people down. So I realize as preppers, you guys probably already have the mental mindset that you are more self-reliant and you are going to take care of you and your own. But these might be good talking points to bring up with loved ones or friends when they're making fun of you for having maybe a lot of food and water storage. Maybe these are things that you could tactfully bring up in a hopefully not aggressive, arrogant, and off-putting way to maybe help enlighten them a little bit so maybe they'll become more prepared as well. So the first reason why it's a remarkably bad idea to depend on the government to help you or to save you during a disaster is that governments, they tend to prepare for what is normal. They prepare for things that they have A, seen happen before, and B, believe are likely to happen again. So that's why events like the Texas ice storm or Hurricane Harvey and other things have really taken them off guard and their response has been less than ideal to those situations. It's really hard to justify spending money in preparation for an event that happens once every several decades or maybe even once every few centuries. So it's always the things that are just like out of nowhere, or you hear this word a lot, unprecedented, that really catch everybody off guard and result in a really bad government response. Another reason why you don't want to depend on the government to save you is that the official response is always going to be hampered by bureaucracy and politics. So one example of that would be, let's say you are the mayor of a coastal city and there's a hurricane coming your way. A lot of us as preppers would say, just evacuate the city. But from their perspective, if that hurricane turns at the last minute and they evacuate the city unnecessarily, then they're going to be catching flack from that from now on if they ever get reelected to begin with because there are economic consequences to shutting down a city, especially a major city. So not saying it's right, but that's the reason why a lot of the times they wait until the last minute and sometimes it's too late to evacuate because of those economic and also more stupidly the political consequences to their career. Gross, right? Then another reason why kind of bureaucracy and politics get in the way is that receiving and distributing aid, that's kind of a lengthy, complicated process. It's not as easy as a lot of people imagine it is or probably it really should be. There's a lot of steps you have to go through, a lot of phone calls that have to be made, a lot of approvals that have to be given before aid can be sent to a specific area. So just a lot of bureaucratic red tape that takes time to negotiate, which yes, we all think is stupid, but there it is. It's, it's just a fact of life. Then also communication between agencies, whether it's local and state, state and federal, or even like state to state, federal to federal, a lot of the times isn't all that great. And then you kind of stack on top of that the interagency politics that goes on. Sometimes people within those agencies and within those levels of government don't really like each other all that much. And it's stupid and it's petty, but that can hamper their response in some cases. Then there's also situations where the government prevents people from helping that are willing to help. They block them from being able to send aid or send personnel. 
And if you're dealing with the government trying to keep, you know, everyday citizens out of an affected area, you know, a lot of the time you hear the excuse of you, we don't want people putting themselves in danger, we don't want them getting in the way of the official response, and you can, you know, agree or disagree with that. I tend to disagree because look at all the wonderful work that the Cajun Navy did um, in Houston. They helped save a lot of people. I have a friend who went down there in his bow fishing boat and rescued a, a lot of people as well. So, I mean, being a Texan and knowing people that have done that, I think it's a good thing when people can go and help their neighbor. Um, but sometimes the government gets in the way. And even it's it's not just against, like, you know, everyday citizens. During Katrina, there was a situation where there was a plane in Germany loaded with supplies that sat on the runway for days because the, our government never gave them the go-ahead to come and send those supplies. So bureaucracy and politics can be a big hindrance to people getting the help they need during a disaster. The next reason why you don't want to depend on the government to rescue you during a disaster is that emergency relief is extremely expensive. So it goes to reason that there's not going to be enough money to go around to help everybody. So you got to kind of assume that you're going to get the short end of the stick so that by planning ahead, you don't get the short end of the stick. And this kind of goes back to politics, and I think I touched on it earlier in the video, is if you are in government and you're putting together a budget, it's extremely hard to justify spending for something that may not happen, which, of course, from our perspective, is completely ridiculous because it is going to happen. We know that year after year, you can almost bet money that there is going to be some sort of wide-scale, at least natural disaster somewhere in the country that costs billions upon billions of dollars and results in loss of life. So we know that it's going to happen. But then you have politicians and all of their stupid little pet projects back in the districts that they represent that they have to get money to. So something that many of us would see as more essential, a lot of the time gets swept by the wayside because they have the excuse and the mindset of, well, what if it doesn't happen? It is going to happen. We know that. That is why we prepare. The next reason why it's a remarkably bad idea to depend on the government to rescue you during a disaster is that there's always going to be logistic challenges that they must overcome to get supplies and personnel to the folks that need them most. And one example of that is if there is an ongoing situation, such as a weather event, then the government's going to have to wait until it's relatively safe before they send additional people and additional supplies downrange because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to send people into the thick of it if they're just going to need to be rescued as a result because that's going to drag the whole process out longer than it needs to be. And to be able to know when it's safe to send people, there have to be there has to be information coming from the affected area. So folks that have that are already boots on the ground, they have to relay information, let other people know what exactly is going on so that they can get a plan together to send the folks that need to be sent and the supplies that need to be sent to the appropriate area. And then when it comes to transporting those personnel and those supplies, that's going to take time and money as well. Just, I mean, you're going to have people that, that need help right then, but it's not really going to work out that well because it takes time to transport personnel and supplies, especially if it's via road or via rail. If you're fortunate enough to be able to have that stuff transported through the air, then of course time is going to be less. But you also have to take into consideration that infrastructure can be affected as well. Roads might be flooded, roads might be destroyed. Also, airports might be rendered unusable at least for a certain amount of time while they're clearing runways, clearing debris, getting the tower back up and running. Then after help does arrive, it needs to be distributed in an equitable and organized way, but unfortunately, a lot of the times that's not really what happens. There's not enough aid to go around, so we start to see issues that crop up during the distribution process. A lot of the times those distribution points can actually become places of violence because people are so upset that there's not enough aid to go around. I mean, could you imagine being in line to get a package of water for your family 
and then you were literally the first person that does not get that water because they ran out, that is how unrest starts. So by taking care of yourself, having your own supplies set aside, you're going to be able to avoid a lot of those situations. The next reason why you should not depend on the government to save you during an emergency or disaster is that the protection of individuals is not really one of the chief functions of government. A lot of the times when you see disasters happen, you'll see that the government, first of all, it's trying to maintain law and order, and then also the stability of the nation as a whole. And how it goes about doing that is, it first and foremost protects its own survival and stability. Like if you look at continuity of government plans, there's very little in it, if anything at all, that involves protection of individual private citizens. No, what the purpose of continuity of government is, is to ensure that the government survives, at least in some capacity, so that it can still govern, at least to some extent. So that being said, you really want to take steps to ensure your own survival because if the situation gets bad enough, the government's going to be worried about its own functionality first before it ever starts thinking about your safety. Then another good reason why you shouldn't be depending on the government to save you, and I'm sure you, some of you have been screaming this at the screen the entire video waiting on it, is that a lot of the time the government is the one that causes the blooming problems that results in the situation that we're dealing with. Now, given it's probably not likely that, you know, they cause hurricanes or whatever, but by not planning ahead, they have made the situation much worse than maybe what it should have been. Then there are situations that the government does have a direct or indirect hand in causing, such as economic issues. Places like Greece, and I believe the other is Venezuela, a lot of the times the reason why those economies collapse were at least in part or largely due to mismanagement on the government's part. Then you look at situations like Flint, Michigan. That was the result of like bungled management from the government and then them trying to cover their own butts throughout the duration of that situation. So the government, it has a history of like mismanaging things, not taking certain potential threats seriously enough and then when a situation starts to happen to save their own skin, then they try to hide it. So those, I mean, that by itself is a good enough reason for me to not want to depend on the government just because it's an imperfect organization that makes mistakes and I don't want me and my loved ones to be on the receiving end of those mistakes. So the main lesson to be learned from all this is that it's going to be up to us to take responsibility for the well-being of ourselves and our loved ones. So doing things like stockpiling food and water, all of those prepper basics, those are things that everybody should be doing. Then also, if at all possible, try to get out of an affected area before things get bad because there's going to be situations in some cases where if you wait too long, then your goose is going to be cooked. You won't be able to get out. But if it's a situation where maybe you're better off staying put, try to keep a low profile. Try to be that gray man, which that should be the topic of a video coming up in and of itself. And then also, as time goes on, continually reassess that situation to decide, should I continue to stay put or should I try to go? Which is the most safe and which is the most advantageous for me and my loved ones. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all have a good one. And if you didn't do so already, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks again.